What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at it again with another Copart walk around out here at the, I, I want to call this Dallas, but I think it's called Wilmer, Texas. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate that. With <laughs> Wilmer, Texas, guys. We're back out here at this beautiful, beautiful yard. The most beautiful yard I have ever seen. I'm super excited to be here. Everybody here has been super generous and really helpful. So let's go ahead and jump into this right now. We're going to start with a 2013 Subaru BRZ. Now, I'm not sure why this one's here. She's got some miles on her. 171,055 miles. She looks clean, at least on this side. I wonder if she's hiding something on the other side. Let's take a look. No. She's just high mileage. She's just high mileage. Clean as can be though. She's got good tires. The body lines look phenomenal. It's listed as a start, not a drive. So with 170,000 miles, I'm gonna put my money on a clutch. But that's not a big deal, man. It's not a big deal at all for one of these. Clutch is not difficult to change. Oh, does she have power though? Let's see. Oh, she's nice on the interior, guys. The shifter feels good. You can hear it clunking through all the gears really nicely. Uh, push to start. Okay. Come on, give me my foot. Well, it's a, it's a little bit on, a, on the small side. Whew. Dead as a doornail. That's okay. That's okay. We can fire it up. Let's see. We got VSC Sport Traction. We got heated seats. Push button. We got push buttons for climate control. We got knobs for climate control. We got a Subaru Nav. Look at that. XM HD radio navigation. She is loaded to the gills. We got a 160 mile an hour speedometer. You think she'll go 160? I have my doubts about that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know what we got to do right now, though? I got to first whew, I gotta climb out of this damn thing. Good Lord. Uh, I'll tell you right now, it's a small car. <laughs> it's a real small car. Okay. Let's, uh, there we go. All right. Well, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Wait a minute. Um, this, this doesn't belong here. This belongs on that engine. So let's, let's, uh, some things have been removed, guys. All of this has been removed. Look at this. The air filter. Was this a flood? It's not a flood. Uh, I'll tell you this, it ain't my car, so I'm not going to sit here and play with uh, trying to hook everything back up. She's got oil. I'm wondering if this was a flood. I do. I wonder if this was a flood because it, it just looks too damn good. It is an insurance company. It's got to be a flood. Okay, let me put a jump pack on it and let's see what it does. All right, we got the trusty NOCO GB150 hooked up. Let's go ahead and fire this one. I like this. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, it's a little small for small for me, but uh, I'm sure you get used to it. All right, let's see. Uh oh. Huh. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna be one of them cars, aren't you? Aren't you? You're feisty. I like that. I respect that. I do. Let me mess with this a little bit. Let's see if we can uh, make her fire up. All right, I'm gonna give her another chance here. All right, I believe she deserves a second chance. But I'll tell you what, if she don't listen to me this time, we're done. Nope, she's locked up. Yeah, she's locked. Well, dag nabbit. <laughs> And I'll bet some of you are wondering, well, wait a minute, if it's got an S on the windshield for starts, how could it possibly be locked up? Somebody must have got it wrong. Somebody made a mistake. And if you bought this car, you'd be furious over it, right? Well, let me explain something to you guys and gals. It's very important to remember that with flood cars, <laughs> flood cars are tricky. Flood cars can be very deceiving. 
All right, you can end up with a flood car like this, and when it rolled in here, hell, two months ago, it may have run just fine, okay? But as things start to soak and set and corrode, uh, <laughs> a month or two down the road could be the difference between running and driving and not doing anything. I can't say for sure that the motor is locked up. I would guess that the motor is locked up, but it could be something as simple as the starter wires have been corroded, okay? The, the wiring or something to the computer or down to the starter could be corroded to the point where it's not making a good enough connection, whether it's a, a power wire, a ground wire. Uh, but if I were to just take an educated guess from years of experience dealing with this type of stuff and flood cars, because I really love flood cars, honestly, I would put my money on a locked up engine, especially seeing that the air intake has been disconnected and removed, the oil cap was off, and the oil is overfilled. I'm gonna put my money on the engine being locked up. Now, there is a very good possibility when it rolled in here, it ran. But today, it doesn't. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. I'm Bruce Nolan. Next on my list is a 2014 Chevy Camaro 2SS. Believe it or not, yes, the 2SS is a real thing. I had one. It, it gives you a whole slew of additional options that the 1SS doesn't come with. Uh, she, uh, she took a nasty little hit to the front, but the A-pillar looks good. The fender apron looks good. And the bumper looks trashed. There's definitely some damage. You can probably see it down in there. Ah, the frame rail looks good right here, but I can see back there, way back there, the frame rail is, let's see if I can get you in here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she is, she's done. She's done. Now, the good news is though, that's totally fixable. It's got seam sealer around it. I guarantee it's got spot welds under it. You could pop that sucker out and you could put a new frame rail in. She's got how many miles? Nine, is it 9,000 or 92,000? I'm not quite sure. Man, she was a slick looking car too. She was a real, so I'm gonna guess 9,000, okay? I'm gonna guess 9,000. It's got the one LE badges, interesting. It also looks like it has a, a ZL1 style hood. So maybe somebody was trying to make it look like a ZL1. But oops, sorry about that. I mean, I don't think I can hurt that any, right? Uh, that's pretty well done. But I, I definitely don't. I don't come out here trying to tear nothing up. Let's take a look at the interior. Oh, and she's a stick shift. Lots of bags blown. Lots and lots of bags blown. Wait, what year is this? What year are you, man? It's a 14. Okay. It's a 14. Let's see if we can pop this hood. Oh, I don't know if I can get in here to do it, guys. This one's a tight fit. This one's a real tight fit. Oh, help me out here. <laughs> there she is. All right. So she's got a lot of bags blown, man. Uh, suspension damage, frame damage, if you can even call this thing a frame, but whatever. All right, let's take a peek. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Come on. Nope, she does not want to open. Ah, damn it. There we go. Whoo wee Okay, well, she's got the air aid. And very nice. Very nice. She's clean. How are things over on this side? It's hard to tell. I can't really see that far down there. I'm pretty sure this whole front end has been knocked over this way. It looks like this frame rail is going this way. And I don't know if you can even see that one down there, but she's uh, she's buckled pretty good all over. It looks like she's pushed this way as well. Uh, I guess that makes sense because you could tell it took, hit, it took a hit right there on that corner. So I'm gonna say the whole front end has been shifted over this direction. And you could fix it, you could totally fix it. You can totally fix it. You think she's gonna need a jump? I think she's gonna need a jump. That's if I can even get in here to, to start this bad boy. Does it have power? I'm gonna climb in here and I'm gonna find out there's no... Oh yeah, there's no power. None, none. So now we're gonna climb back out and I'm gonna do the right thing. Get my booster pack. 
hook it up because I want to hear it run. I don't know if you can see down there, but look at those beautiful, beautiful headers. Those are long tubes, boys. She's got long tubes on her. So I can uh, I can guarantee you there's some pipes on the back. If we fire this one up. She's gonna be she's gonna be right. I guarantee you she's gonna be right. Service airbag. You don't say. Oh, oh, oh wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, I like this. Yeah, I like this a lot. Okay. She's nice. She's real nice. Good oil pressure. Everything looks good, guys. It does. 90,000 miles on the odometer. Oh, wow. Oh, she sounds so good. Power steering does not work. Good clutch though, she pulls. I'm gonna shut it off. But uh, <laughs> oh, I miss my Camaro SS. I do, I really miss my Camaro SS. I like this, I like this. She sounds right, she sounds right. Now again, I noticed I got this 1LE package. I don't know if that's legitimate or not, or if they're just trying to make it look like a ZL1. Um, but I can tell you this, it sure as hell sounds like one. She sounds mean, guys. I like this one. I made you wait long enough. I know this is the one that you guys are wanting to see. The 2020 Chevy Camaro ZL1. Ooh, boy. Man. This one's right, guys. Look at that hood. Look at that. <sighs> Look at those side skirts. It's beautiful. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I feel bad that it's sitting out here with all these other cars that uh, it just doesn't belong next to. Look at that. Oh, you poor thing. Let's go take a look at the damage. And of course, we're going to want to hear it run, right? You don't want to hear it run? Okay, well, we won't start it up then. Yeah, we will. Yeah, we will. We're definitely going to start it up. All right, so we start out with the A-pillar. I always like to start where the damage starts and kind of work our way this way. Uh, the door is damaged. I don't care too much about that because that's just superficial, not a big deal. A-pillar looks fine. Doesn't look like it took any damage. The fender apron looks fine. Again, that's really good news. Down here inside the wheelhouse, looks good. Doesn't look like anything smashed into anything. Um, so that's promising. I think I see some suspension damage down here, though. Let me see if I can get you guys in oh, that's a tight spot but right there do you see the crack there and that looks like some aftermarket welding i think something snapped there and somebody welded it back together just to just to kind of center down the road i think that's part of the cradle actually yeah somebody uh i think somebody's been under there doing some welding just to just to get it back to where it could be moved a lot easier oh wow yeah 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 yep yeah, take a look in there. She's suffering, guys. She is suffering. <sighs> Anything is fixable with enough time, patience, and money, right? Honestly, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't. The frame rail, although a little scuffed up, frame rail actually looks all right. I think just about everything under here actually looks like it's okay. Uh, the little radiator here is still holding on for dear life. The hoses are still attached to it. This could be fixed. Now you may have to uh, do a little hacking on her, you know, to get it the way you want it. But this one right here, you can make this work. You could make this work. I don't want to know how much that front bumper is though. I don't want to know how much that fender is either. And it's missing, uh, the rocker cover on this side is missing as well. The rest of the car looks hot though. I mean, it does, this car, this car is fire, man. You got that Alcantara everywhere, everywhere. You got the cooled seats, blew the side bag there. 
And uh, curtain bags are good. Wheel bag is good. Knee bolster bag is gone. Uh, thankfully, the passenger bag is good. So you don't have to worry about replacing the uh, the airbag or the dashboard, I mean. Sorry, I'm starting to, starting to get a little heated out here. It's a little hot. Oh, where is the hood release? Way under there. There we go. It's going to need a jump start. So we'll go ahead and uh, 9,896 miles. You poor girl. Poor, poor girl. I feel so bad for you. It's got the heads up display. Look at that. Beautiful LT4 supercharged. I don't even know what the horsepower specs are on this thing. Is it still 650, 650 or is it... Have we gone up to like 700 or something now? In the Corvettes, they got a nice little plaque in there that tells you. Whew, man. What do you think this is going to go for, guys? Comment right now what you think this car is going to go for. I'm curious. Curious to see what you think. I love this. Like, I really love this. I would drive this home. Okay, maybe not. I don't think I'd be able to drive this from Dallas all the way home. Guys, let's put a jump pack on it. Let's see what she sounds like. All right, moment of truth. What do you think? I think she's going to fire just fine. I do. It's listed as a run and drive, and I have no doubt that it'll go forward and backward. No doubt at all. This, this thing's an automatic. Okay. I thought it was a stick shift. I guess they only make them an automatic, huh? Okay, honestly, the other Camaro sounded way more intimidating. Way more intimidating. Do we have the valved exhaust? Is there an exhaust setting somewhere? Hell, I don't know. Mode. Ah, there we go. Listen how quiet it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't worry about the safety systems. We don't care. Rear axle. Okay, oops. <laughs> Oh, man. Brakes are good. She moves. Yes. Does the important window work? I mean, that's really the most important thing right now. Right? <laughs> important window works. Of course, only got 10,000 miles on it, guys. Everything works. You're not going to drive this one home, but damn it, she sounds good. Oh, listen to that exhaust. Uh, she's not very loud, but I love the crackles and pops. I love that. Yes, sir, a ZL1. I am so happy that I got to look at this. She is a beauty. She needs a little work, for sure. But this is practically a brand new car, guys. Uh, Man, you can't go wrong with this one. I'm telling you. There's go, you're going to need to do a little doctoring uh, on the subframe. I can guarantee you that. Maybe on a little bit of suspension. And it's obviously going to need some parts that are fairly expensive. Like the headlight and the bumper. And probably that side panel unless it's somewhere in the car. But I think overall, this one is solid. Now don't get mad at me for pulling out a Dodge Neon, okay? I had to do a Dodge Neon because... I'm so used to the cars that I normally show on the channel, I was feeling a little, a little out of place here. You know, there's so many nice cars. I was like, let's pull out a Dodge Neon. Not because it's not a nice car, but because it's, a, it's more of a normal car. And in this group of cars, it's kind of the, uh, the odd one out here. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I have always loved the Dodge Neon. You guys have been around for any length of time. You've heard me tell stories. I've had plenty of them. I've always loved them, even though they're not the greatest cars in the world. I've just always had an attraction to them. And I think because in the 90s, Dodge came out with the Neon. Early 90s, it's like 94, I believe, when the Neon came out. And it was so unique. It was so different. It looked like a bug. It was aerodynamic. It just changed the game, man. That and the Cavalier. Cavalier did the same thing. The Cavalier is a little more angular, but it was definitely a more aerodynamic bug looking car. And when I first saw the Neon, I fell in love with it. And I honestly, ever since then, I have loved these cars. I have always loved these cars. And this one is a little bit unique, a little bit, because it's a stick shift. Yes, it's a stick shift. It's also hail damaged and that's fine. Whoo, boy. 
Uh. All right, dead as a doornail, that's fine. It still has its dashboard, right? Dodge was still making reasonable quality dashboards back to the interior, and this is actually in pretty good shape. That's concerning. Uh, how many miles she's got on? 155, yeah, that's, uh, that's impressive. It's got some bald tires. Uh, it's got a ton of hail damage. And I'll almost bet you, I don't, I don't, I don't wanna actually bet you, but I would almost bet you that when I fire this bad boy up, it's a, it's a 2.0 liter, I remember that. These are 2.0 liter, single overhead cam. Uh, when I fire it up, I promise you, I promise you, this interior of this car is gonna shake like a son of a gun, man, guaranteed. Let's put a jump pack on it and let's prove myself right. All right, we got the booster pack installed. Let's see what she does. I guarantee the inside of this thing is gonna shake, rattle and roll, man. The motor mounts were real difficult to do on this. Uh-oh, dead again. Well, alrighty then. Uh, to me, that sounds like a battery cable, not the actual battery. I think we got a battery cable loose or, yeah, right there, right there. She's loose, what about you? You're loose too, aren't you? Yep, everything is loose, that's all right. We're gonna force this thing to uh, come back to life here. I bet she start this time. Just need to tighten down those marine clamps a little bit. Wrong, uh, wrong battery terminals for the car, but that's okay. Let's try this again. Everything looks like it's yeah. Everything looks like it's where it should be. It's not leaking any oil that I can see. She actually looks to be in pretty, pretty dang good shape. But you had to get the motor mounts just right on this, and if you didn't, it vibrated. There we go. Oh, well. Okay. There we go. There you go. She cleared up. That's fine. Air conditioning. What do you think the chances are the air conditioning works? I'm going to say slim to none. Let's see. She's actually running really well. Uh, important window does not work. That one does. You got a headliner falling down here a little bit. Oh. Okay. No, she's not happy. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, this one is uh, it's a little rough. A little rough. I mean, the body is tore up with hail. The interior is not great. It's got bald tires. The engine is just shaking, rocking, and rolling. Presumably, she probably just needs uh, a tune-up, would be my guess. Because when you give it a little bit of throttle, she clears right up. So it could be dirty injectors, fuel filters, something like that. AC does not work. And, uh, well, I wonder why. If you look down here at the pulley on the power steering pump, there isn't a belt on it. In fact, there's no belt on this car at all. The power steering pulley is broken. Um, yeah, that's something to deal with. She, she, she's, a, she's a little rough around the edges, man. But if you're willing to put a few bucks into her, you could turn this into something decent, especially since it's a manual. Especially since it's a manual transmission. This thing could be, well, I don't want to say a lot of fun because that right there is a lot of fun. In fact, most of these cars are a lot of fun. This one, not so much. But with a stick shift, you could still have a little bit of fun with this old girl, and I think she's still got some life left in her for the next owner. Last on my list, a 2005 Dodge Ram 1500 with a 5.7 Hemi Magnum, 136,000 miles on the clock. Let me tell you something, it's got that bumblebee look to it, man, that yellow with the 20 inch rims, the black stripes. Oh boy, I didn't see that. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute. I missed something on this truck, hold on. <laughs> oh, look at this spider web there, wow. Okay, all right. So I'm looking, I'm like, wait a minute. We got a ding here, not too big of a deal. Got those 20s, you got some uh, rust going on here. Rust bubble there, cracking. It, it's, it's one of those that looks a lot better from a distance. You know, when you're not standing right on, it actually looks really good. But once you come up to it, it's like, eh. And this is what I noticed. Uh, above everything else is when I walked behind it. I didn't see this. Look at this rust. She's got rust through. She's got cancer bad. 
uh, the bumper is rotted out, the tailgate's rotted out, and if these things are rotted out, this is one of those that I've got a feeling you get underneath, oh wow. Yeah, yeah, that's about all I needed to know. Look at that. Uh, she's got cancer. <sighs> Man, that's a shame. Because the truck looks nice. It really does. Now, that's not to say you can't drive it. Yo, I, who knows how much life she's got left in her. Maybe quite a bit. Uh, then again, it may not be very much at all. Dynamat. She's got power. It's a 4x4 too? No kidding. I didn't know this was four-wheel drive. It's got the key fob, two keys. Ooh. I wonder if that's going to clear up, that tapping. She's got the sunroof, overhead console, trip and uh, all the digital information center stuff, full tank of gas, good oil pressure, but she's, she's definitely tapping. The brake light is flashing. It does have a brake pedal. E-brake. Oh. Uh-uh. Okay, so it does have a brake pedal, but the brakes don't work. <laughs> I'm glad that e-brake was on to catch her. Uh, even with the e-brake on, she still moves. So I'm gonna bet probably either a, a bad master cylinder or she might have some rusted out brake lines. It's really hard to say. I like I like this yellow, man. Oh, it is, it's called the Rumblebee Second Swarm 2808. I did not know that was a thing. Um, honestly, I was just calling it Bumblebee because that's kind of what it looked like. It's called a Rumblebee Second Swarm 2808. So this is kind of a special edition truck then. Air conditioning is ice cold. The important window works. Let's pop the hood. That noise that I think is a rattle. Is it possible that it could just be an accessory pulley or an exhaust leak that I am mistaking? No, I don't think so. Let's let's pop the hood and take a closer look. Oh, come on. Come on, old girl. Come on, Rumblebee. Yeah, she's a little rough, guys. I definitely hear lifters. Yeah, and some of the brake lines have already been replaced. You can see that. She's got a lot of rust issues. 99.9% .9 that's why this is here. She's just got too much rust and it's finally starting to take its toll on her. She's not safe to drive anymore. Damn, that's a shame. That's a shame. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. Even though it's running fine, it's got good oil pressure. Uh, I don't like that, that top end ticking, tapping. I don't like that at all. I'm not trying to damage it. Normally I give it a little rev or something, but uh, this one sounds a little sick, guys. What a shame. This one, I would love to see somebody, I would love to see somebody buy this and do a YouTube video about putting it back together or do some YouTube videos about putting it back together. It's a beautiful truck. It's a beautiful truck. I don't know how deep the rust goes, but I'm going to bet she's definitely got some rust issues underneath. But damn, it's a beautiful truck. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to get out of here. I got to go catch a flight to Portland. That's right. I'm heading to Portland, Oregon, where I'm going to do some walk arounds up there for you guys. So stay tuned. I got a lot more cars coming for you in the very near future. I hope you enjoyed this content because I'm traveling all over. Today I'm in Dallas. Tomorrow I'm in Portland. We're going to have a lot of fun. I love going to different yards and seeing how, you know, seeing the different... I don't know, the different places like this one where everything, there's just miles and miles of cars as far as the eye can see. And it is so well organized. It's absolutely beautiful. I, I've got to come back down here again. I got, I really, really love this place, but I can't wait to go up there and check out Portland. Stay tuned. We're going to do that together. If you enjoyed the content, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't hit the thumbs down button, drop those comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all of that stuff. Auto Auction Rebuilds. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you again very soon in the next one.